What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Jay Will coming at y'all with another video, man. In today's video, we about to do another reaction. Like I said in my previous reaction, I got a lot of videos to react to. This one says Action News Anchor Brian Taft's full interview with Kamala Harris. All right, now, your boy not too political, but I had to make a video on this shit, bro, because I'm not with her. I'm not voting, by the way, but out of both candidates, right, you got Trump, you got Harris, bro. Either one is like shooting yourself in either foot. You get what I'm saying? But I'd rather be better off not voting for her if I was voting, bro, because, yo, she's a liar, my nigga. Bro, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me put my phone down. We about to lock in real quick. I ain't going to say too much. I'm going to just point out the lies, bro. Like, look at her face, bro. She looked deceitful, my nigga. She pretty, but she looked deceitful. I, I, come on. But. Like the video, man. Comment down below what else you want to see next. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I ain't going to do too much talking. I'm going to just point out the bullshit, all right? I think this her, like, first interview by herself. She ain't got no buddies or nothing with her, but come on. All good? Okay. <clears throat> okay, wonderful. Good. Awesome. Madam Vice President, pleasure to meet you. Thanks good for your to time today. Mine. Our audience appreciates your time. As well. Of course. As you know... We're sitting here in a state and arguably in front of an audience that 54 days from now could decide <clears throat> the outcome of this presidential election. Yeah. You hear it more than I do. People want to know more about you and about your specific plans. At the debate the other night, you talked about creating an opportunity economy. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we can drill down on that a little bit. When we talk about bringing down prices and making Good life question. more affordable for people, yeah. what are one or two specific things you <clears> have in mind for that? Well, I'll start with this. Um, I grew up a middle class kid. My mother raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. Um, she was able to finally save up enough money to buy our first house when I was a teenager. Um, I grew up in a community of hardworking people, you know, construction workers and nurses and teachers. And I try to explain to some people who may not have had the same experience, you know, if. if the I ain't going to lie to you. Um, she said construction workers and nurses, bro. The construction workers and nurses, I know they making bread. They not considered middle class, bro. Especially if you a travel nurse, are you like the top tier RN nurse? You making bread. Construction workers make bread, bro, because there's so many projects. Like right now where I stay at, bro, they got hella projects. They building houses and shit. I don't consider them niggas middle class. I think they a little bit above middle class or they at like the top level of middle class, damn near about to reach the other class, you feel me, but, I don't know, bro, with her, she just be like, when she gets asked a question, she tries to, like, go around the question so much, bro, and then, she'll get to her point, but she first gotta, like, give us this extra info that we don't even need, you, hey, you remember them math problems in school, bro, the math problems with, instead of saying, Jimmy has five apples, he ate two, how many apples he got, that ain't the question what I heard, bro. The question be like, I went to the store the other day and I stepped on a cockroach. But anyways, I had five apples and I thought about eating two, but I maybe ate three. And then I also went to Dollar Tree. Like, it's extra shit we don't care about, bro. Get to the fucking point, my nigga. Let me go back a little bit, bro. Try to explain to some people who may not have had the same experience, you know. Shit is crazy. The, a lot of people will relate to this. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood of folks who were very proud of their lawn. What the fuck? You know? And um, and I was raised to believe and to know that all people deserve dignity. And that we as Americans have <clears throat> beautiful character. You know, we have ambitions and aspirations and dreams. But not every... I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I keep pausing it. It's just, I don't know, bro. Just shoot it straight to us. I promise. Yo, Kamala, if you watch this, right? You probably not. Maybe your team might watch this. I don't know. If you would get to the fucking point, my nigga. Anytime you telling a story time, get to the fucking point, bro. Your storytelling skills is horrible. I'm not trying to listen to no we care about our lines. We we American people got dignity. We all know that shit. Get to the fucking point, dog. Your storytelling skills is horrible. I ain't gonna lie. That we as Americans have a beautiful character. You know, we have 
ambitions and aspirations and dreams. But not everyone necessarily has access to the resources that can help them fuel those dreams and ambitions. So when I talk about building an opportunity economy. Bro, it took her. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. She started at a minute, right? Let me see. Nah, she started before that, bro. It damn near took her a minute to get to the fucking point. You get what I'm saying? It is very much with the mind of investing in the ambitions and aspirations. Hold up. And the Let me make sure this mic's still recording. My eyes. I just woke up. And creating opportunities right, we good. for people, for example, to start a small business. Um, my mother, you know, worked long hours, damn. and our neighbor helped raise us. We used to call her, it was, I still call her, our second mother. She was a small business owner. I love our small business owners. I learned who they are from my childhood. And she was a, a community leader. She hired locally. She mentored. <clears throat> our small businesses are so much a part of the fabric of our communities, not to mention, really, I think, the backbone of America's economy. So my opportunity economy plan includes giving startups a $50,000 tax deduction to start their small business. It used to be $5,000. Nobody can start a small business with $5,000. Don't get me wrong. $50,000 sounds beautiful. Nigga. But bro, I'm trying to start my own business too. But who's going to pay for that? That's similar to like financial aid, right? Financial aid, you have to pay that money back. They, they're giving you money. To go to school, my nigga. But you got to pay that back unless you get like a scholarship or some shit like that. So if you're giving a $50,000 tax deduction to start up a business, she just said it used to be five. Now it's about to be 50, right? If she get in office. Well, she already is. But if she become president, right? Who's going to pay for them tax cuts? People just think this imaginary line that she's saying is just... Oh, man, it's going to make everything better, bro. You got to be smart, bro. Like, you got to understand money. You got to understand, like, how shit works. That tax deduction, bro, that's going to come out the middle class, fam. I'm being honest. I'm not just speculating. You have to make it make sense, bro. Like, you think the government just going to do that? Hell no, nah, bro. She got to first get that shit passed through legislation, Congress, all that shit. Let me go back. Small business. It used to be $5,000. Nobody can start a small business with $5,000. But investing in people's innovative ideas and giving them the ability to go for it. Um, opportunity economy, economy means, look, we don't have enough housing in America. We have a housing supply shortage. We do. And what that means, in particular for so many younger Americans, the American dream is elusive. It's just actually not attainable. So part of my plan is to work with the private sector and housing developers to give them a tax credit to be able to partner with us as the government to build, and my goal is, 3 million new homes by the end of my first term. In addition, to help people who just want to get their foot in the door, literally. And so giving first-time home buyers a $25,000 down payment assistance. Are they going to do... <laughs> Is add that twenty five thousand to the back end of the cost of the house, bro. So for an example, right? Let's say what's a what's a a home a home developer. Let's say uh, LGI Homes or uh, I, that's the only one I can think of right now. Let's say LGI built the house, right? LGI built the house for two fifty. Before this bullshit, right now the house is two fifty. Whenever if she gets an office, supposedly. Uh, they gonna add the twenty five to the back end of the house. The house was worth two fifty. Now it's gonna be two seventy five. But people not gonna pay attention to it. They're just so geeked and happy. Oh my God, I'm getting twenty five thousand. Oh, my nigga, you're paying that for a house that's not even worth two seventy five. So then, when it's time to sell that motherfucker, it ain't gonna be worth the price that you bought it at. You get what I'm saying? Unless the economy is better, bro. You got to understand how the system works. So when you buy a house, you can't sell that bitch if the market is bad. You got to wait for the market to get good. All that shit plays a factor in the economy, bro. Like right now, we have a house, right? We can't sell this motherfucker until shit starts getting a little bit better. Rates have dropped a little bit, my nigga. Just a little bit, but 
I don't know, bro. If, if she stays in office and becomes president, I really want to see how shit about to work, bro. Because, like I said, fifty thousand dollars here, twenty five thousand here, bro. This shit not gonna just fly by night. Like it ain't gonna just happen like that, bro. She got to get shit voted on, get shit passed, and then on top of that, bro, I think it's gonna make the economy worse. If I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, bro, I, let's 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 uh, keep listening, bro. Cause the I'm curious, dog. Twenty five thousand dollar debt payment <clears throat> assistance to be able to just get in the door and then they will do the work that they need to do to save and to pay that mortgage and to build Make sure wealth for no themselves and their family. All right, we good. These are some examples of what I mean when I talk about an opportunity economy and a lot of it has to do with just the community I was raised in and the people that I, you know, I admired who work hard, you know, and deserve to have, you know, their dreams fulfilled because they're prepared to work for it. Wix gives you the freedom to tell your story. You talk at the debate and Man, at previous damn appearances YouTube about premium. turning the page mm -hmm. uh, on the past. And in fact, here today in Johnstown, <coughs> we're talking about a new way forward. Yeah. I think some people have a question, given maybe your current role as Vice President of the United States, how different you are from Joe Biden. And so I wonder if there are one or two spots, policy areas or approaches where you would say, I'm a different person. Well, I'm obviously not Joe Biden, and um, you know I, I offer a new generation of leadership. And so, for example, thinking about developing and and creating an opportunity economy where it's about investing in areas that really need a lot of work, and maybe focusing on what is she investing in? That's my question. Like I'm being dead ass. I'm not trying to be funny, but what is she investing in? All she said about the opportunity economy is about housing, which is twenty five thousand. Also, if you want to start up a business, which is fifty thousand, I didn't hear nothing about. Um, I heard something she said that people are price gouging or whatever she said. It was in another video, but I don't know, bro. She she's not giving a lot of points. She's not saying what she's really gonna do. She only pointed out like two things about housing. And about startup businesses that's cool but majority of people in america right now they want cheaper groceries they want cheaper gas they want everything to be cheaper like bro i'm gonna tell you this right now bro y'all might hate me it is what it is bro you don't like the truth that's cool when trump was in office right like i said i'm not i'm not for either one bro because this is these are the choices we got to make but i'm damn sure not about to side with her but look when Trump was in office, bro, shit was not that expensive. I know because I had a shitty job back then. Trump was in office from 16 all the way up until 2020. Now, 2019 and 2020 don't really count, bro, because we had to deal with COVID. Well, actually, I take that back. 2019 was cool. 2020 was the last year. Like, that was COVID, bro. Shit was going south. Shit started getting expensive, bro, because we didn't have the resources because of the, the vid. You get what I'm saying? So... From 16 to 19, bro, those was like the best years of my life, bro, as an adult. Like, I, I graduated high school, nigga. I got uh, hella jobs, hella opportunities to do stuff, bro. Stuff was cheap. Gas wasn't that high. The, the price of milk wasn't that high. Now, as they're in office, bro, I mean, they've been in office for three and a half years, bro. Shit done gone up. Gas done gone up. A lot of stuff has gone up, and they're still blaming Trump for what they're they're in office for three and a half years, right? So it's like, how you gonna blame Trump? I don't know, bro. It's, it don't make sense. If you're in office right now, you should do something about it, but you're not. So I don't know. Is that don't make sense. Need a lot of work. And maybe focusing on, again, the aspirations and the dreams, but also just recognizing that at this moment in time, some of the stuff we could take for granted years ago, we can't take for granted anymore. Um, for example, another... Um, plan that I have that is a new approach is to expand the child tax credit to six thousand dollars for young families for the first year of their again where's the where's the tax credits where's the deductions where this shit coming from bro like these ideas don't sound bad but be real like you think this shit gonna get passed or you think the middle class gonna get taxed hard as fuck be real you think the government just going to give you free money? The only time they did that shit was with the stimulus checks. But then again, like, 
it was like right after we got the stimulus check, shit started going up. Gas started going up. Like everything started going up, bro, because they had to get their money back. They just gave you free money. They want that money back, bro. Everybody got like, what, 1200 Some people got more, but come on. To $6,000 for young families for the first year of their child's life. Because that is obviously a very critical stage of development of a child. And a lot of young parents need the help to buy a car seat or a crib or clothes for their kids. And so my approach is about new Excuse ideas, me. new policies that are directed at the current moment. And also, to be very honest with you, my focus is very much on what we need to do over the next 10, 20 years to catch up to the 21st century around, again, capacity, but also challenges. Capacity of what? What is she? Hold up, bro. I got to re-listen to what she just said, because she, like I said, bro, she be, like, spitting out extra information that we don't need. It's like a math problem in school, bro. 20 years. Hold up. My focus is very much on what we need to do over the next 10, 20 years to catch up to the 21st century around, again, capacity, but also challenges. Nigga, what, capa and nigga said, mm, what capacity and challenges? What the fuck are you talking about, bro? Point out, you know what? I'm starting to get mad myself. The shit don't make sense what she's saying, bro. She's trying to sound smart, but I'm not saying she's not smart, but dog, you can hear bullshit. Like, she's a manipulator, bro. I can trust me, bro. Any woman that's that's pretty like this and that's trying to have power, bro, pay attention to the way they manipulate men and the way they just talk. I'm being dead ass, bro. Why do you think most niggas be dating girls that's low-key not that fine, bro? Because they don't have to deal with the bullshit. She's not going to be a liar, nigga. She's going to tell you. She's going to tell you everything straight up. You feel me? But that niggas know what I'm talking about. Like, if you date a girl that's a 10... Somewhat, bro. She gonna try to manipulate you or try to try to test you. You know what I'm saying? Test your manhood and shit. She gonna see if you really wear the jeans, my nigga. <laughs> Come up on. To the 21st century, around again capacity, but also challenges. Don't make no sense. Crime and public safety are two major issues, yeah. uh, right at the forefront of voters' minds in Philadelphia as well, where crime is a significant issue. Motherfucker said capacity. When we talk about crime. <laughs> the conversation turns to gun safety. Capacity sound like population control. I'm gonna keep it a buck as well and i think you actually probably caught a lot of people off guard maybe a bit by surprise in the debate the other night when you mentioned that you are a gun owner i know you said it in 2019 as well mm -hmm. i want to talk about your values on this yeah. issue when it comes to gun ownership where do you draw the line in america on gun ownership and gun use well like you said brian i am a gun owner and tim walls my running mate is also a gun owner we're not taking anybody's guns away i support the second amendment and I she lying. I can read right through her. She lying, bro. Watch the way she stuttered. And trust me, bro. I'm a gun owner, nigga. Bro, I'm passionate. I ain't gonna lie. Bro, I say like maybe five, six years ago, I, I didn't have a gun. I wasn't big on carrying the gun. I wasn't big on all. Like, I didn't really care, bro. I was just trying to get this money, right? It was like as soon as I got my first gun, I was like, bro, I like this shit. Like, I, I just started getting passionate about it. I'm the type of person, bro, if I own a gun, I know everything about the gun. Like, I know a lot of shit. The fact that she's saying she's a gun owner, but then, like, just watch her face, bro. Like, she starts stuttering and shit. Watch. In America, on gun ownership and gun use. Watch, watch. Well, like you said, Brian, I am a gun owner, and Tim Walls, my running mate. Is she had to bring up somebody else. Is also a gun owner. We're not taking anybody's guns away. I support... I, I just, you see what I'm saying? Like, that shit. Why you doing that, bro? You a liar, my nigga. Support the second you, you a liar. And I support reasonable gun safety laws. Part of my approach to this is I was a career prosecutor for most of my career. I have personally prosecuted homicide cases. I have personally looked at autopsies. I have personally seen what assault weapons do to the human body. And so I feel very strongly that it is consistent with the Second Amendment and your right to own a gun to also say we need an assault weapons ban. 
They're literally tools of war. No. Look. It's not the guns that are killing people. It's the people that are crazy with the guns, bro. Don't ban the fucking guns. Don't ban the ARs. I know when Biden was in office, he tried to do a capacity limit on how much you could put in your AR. Uh, I think the capacity for the bullets, I think it went down a little bit. But, bro, I, I do believe in universal checks. I do believe in that. Like, background checks, I do believe in that because... Somebody might be a felon. Somehow they get the gun. You know what I'm saying? You need to do a background, a full background check on that person. But don't ban the fucking guns, bro. Please don't do that. I got an AR right now. And y'all, if y'all pull up, I'm not giving that bitch to you. I promise I'm not. I'm trying to tell you, bro. It's not the person. All right, it is the person. It's not the gun. The gun is not killing people, bro. The person with the gun is killing people. That's what you have to understand, bro. Everybody crying, oh, we need to ban these guns. I understand it, but it's the people, bro. Like, that person is crazy as fuck. If somebody put out a big-ass Michael Myers knife and started stabbing everybody, and they killed, like, 30 niggas with, with this knife, y'all gonna ban knives? No. <laughs> you need that shit to cut up a steak or something. You get what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro, this shit sounds stupid. If motherfuckers invade us, we ain't got no damn ARs. We, now we're going to have to depend on the government because we can't defend ourselves. You get what I'm saying? Or if hella niggas try to rob me right now and all I got is a pistol. That pistol might do some damage, but that AR going to shut niggas up. That's that loud pack. When that AR go crazy, that's that crowd control. Come on. That it is consistent with the Second Amendment and your right to own a gun to also say right. we need an assault weapons ban. They're literally tools of war. They were literally designed to kill a lot of human beings quickly. I say we need universal background checks. The majority of NRA members. That's like the only thing that. I agree with. Why? Because universal it's background just reasonable. check. You just might want to know. That's the only thing I agree with. Before someone can her. buy a lethal weapon, if they've been found by a court to be a danger to themselves or others, you just might want to know. Can small things make a real impact in the world? When you choose the giving pump. Two final questions, if I might. Sure. On the appeal of the man you were running against, as you drove here today, you likely saw a lot of Trump signs. Mm -hmm. He has an historic appeal in this country. And as you are someone running against him and trying to understand. The reason bro has an historic appeal, meaning like majority of the country likes him, is because bro shoot the shit straight to you. He not doing all this dodging the question and, and trying to come up with different ways to, to prove a point. Bro, he's telling you straight up what he about to do, what he not about to do, and then, you know what I'm saying, the shit gets done. And, bro, already been in office. Like I said, like, the economy was better. But let me let me go back a little bit. In this country, and as you are someone running against him and trying to understand that, I wonder how you distill it. What do you understand his appeal to be? And how do you speak to his voters or maybe people who just share his values but are open to something else? I, based on experience and, uh, and a lived experience, know. In my heart, I know. In my soul, I know that the vast majority of us as Americans have so much more in common than what separates us. And I also believe that I am accurate in knowing that most Americans want a leader who brings us together as Americans and not someone who professes to be a leader who is trying to have us point our fingers at each other. I think people are exhausted with that approach, to be honest with you. I think people want a leader who has common sense and tries to find common mm. ground. I'm supported by over 200 Republicans who worked for both Presidents Bush, John McCain, and Mitt Romney. I'm supported by the former Vice President Dick Cheney, Congress former Congress member Liz Cheney. And I think people are more willing now, um, in light of the, the hate and division that we see coming out of Donald Trump, to say, hey, let's, let's put country first. And I think that just makes us stronger and more healthy as a country, to say, look, we, will, we can all debate our differences around, you know, various policies, but 
Let's stop with the division, like enough of that. Let's bring everybody together. And finally, as you introduce yourself to America in a new way, they've heard much of your story at the Democratic National Convention in, in that debate earlier this week. She talk There's about it every night, every chance you get. Americans knew Fuck. about who Kamala Harris is that you don't think they know yet. What would that be? I don't know. I've been... Probably, it's not very different from anybody watching right now. I love my family. Um, one of my favorite things that I it, lately have not been able to do is Sunday family dinner. I love to cook. Um, I, I have incredible friends. My best friend from kindergarten is still my best friend. Um, I think that, um, I mean, I have a career that really and I said it the other day, you know, went. as a career prosecutor, I never asked a victim of crime, were they a Republican or a Democrat? The only thing I ever asked them is, are you okay? And I think that's the approach that most Americans want, regardless of who they voted for in the last election, um, in terms of turning the page and charting the way forward. I imagine you're looking forward to cooking Sunday dinner again. I am looking for it. I love, I, yes, I am looking forward to cooking. With the whole family gets involved, the kids each have their role. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful family, yeah. and we thank you for your time. Thank you. Pleasure thank meeting you. you. Thank, thank you, Brian. You so thank you. <sighs> yeah, man, it's something different. Um, I just wanted to react to this. A lot of people were talking about it. As I can see, it got over a million views. Like I said, I'm not voting for either one, bro. Um, go out and vote if you decide to vote. I ain't going to lie. Somebody had told me this. They put me on game. I'm going to start voting locally because locally we could change shit. The presidency, bro. I think I said this in my, my previous, previous video, like the video before my last one. I was trying to prove a point. I wasn't saying the electoral college doesn't matter. I did not say that, bro. Like, people in the comments was like, oh, bro, you tripping. We need that. I know we need that. But what I was saying is, bro, we know it's a secret society in the government, fam. They go, they the ones that's going to really put the person as the puppet. All these niggas, they're puppets, my nigga. It's somebody behind them that's controlling the shit and telling them what to say. That's why Trump, they kicked his ass up out of there because they like, yo, nigga, say this. That nigga wasn't saying that. He wasn't following the script. They tried to put the teleprompter like, hey, nigga, read this. Bro was going off track saying the shit that he wanted to say. That's why niggas fuck with him because he got the nuts to do that. Everybody else, like, they act like some hoes. They not, bro. They have no backbone. She don't got no backbone. Of course, she ain't got no nuts, but nigga, she, ain't, she don't let them hoes hang. Hell no. Nah. She don't stand on business. That's the whole point I'm trying to say. She don't stand on business, all right? If she win, this is my theory. If she win, bro, we going to fucking war, dog. If Trump win, we going to fucking war. Either one, we going to fucking war. But the way we going to go to war with Trump, they going to try to execute, bro. They going to try to, they already tried. They going to try again. They going to keep trying, bro. God forbid, knock on wood, my nigga. If bro gets shot and he died, we going to war, dog. All right? Now, you can play this video back, rewind it back when the shit unfold. Maybe I prophesied something to you. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, like I said, I don't stand with her, bro. I'm not with her for sure. She a liar, my nigga. She just looked deceitful, dog. It's, it's something I can feel in my intuition, my nigga, my gut, pause. It's something I can feel. It's telling me, like, nah, bro, she not the one. I feel it with Trump, too, but not as much. With her, it's like, oh, no, like, nigga, red, red. Like, if it was a meter, that shit filled up to red because I could just see through the bullshit. I could see through the lies. My nigga, she's deceitful. She don't answer the fucking question fully. She give you all this extra bullshit. Talking about $3 million homes or 3 million new homes and tax credit this and tax deduction this and Nothing was talking about the, the grocery prices. No, She ain't say nothing about that shit in this interview, bro. Fuck that. I want shit to go cheap. I don't know about y'all, but I miss the old days, dog. But, excuse me. Y'all let me know in the comment section what you think, bro. I don't care if you vote for her or whatever, bro. If you do, 
you'll see this shit unfold yourself, all right? <laughs> like the video, comment down below what else you want to see next. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button. I'll see y'all in the next one, man. Peace.